In this video, we will show you how to install a to grow, sap flow, and stem diameter sensor. Once you open the box, you should find these items. Stem diameter sensor. First, take the diameter sensor and the fixing elastic bands. Look for a good location on the stem to install the sensor, preferably close to the base of the plant to avoid shocks and vibrations. For optimal variation, it is necessary to look for a vein, in other words, a bumpy part of the stem to place the needle there. In the following examples, we show you the most optimal spots for installation. Once you have found a good location, take the diameter sensor and slide the cylinder back. Then place the holder on the plant and hold it in position with one hand. With the other hand, take a rubber band and wrap it around the stem as such. If you are installing on a thin stem and the elastic is not tight enough, you can also pull it further over. When the sensor is well fixed, advance the cylinder to bring the needle closer. The needle should come into contact with the stem but should not press hard. It is also important that the needle makes optimal contact with the stem and is perpendicular to the center of the vein. When the sensor is installed, run the cable behind the plant stems, and if possible, place the end of the cable under the substrate. This will limit further disturbances of the measurements. The installation of the sap flow sensor. As a first step, look for an undamaged piece of the stem, preferably long enough to place the sensor easily. Be careful if you install it on old wounds like this. There will be a risk of developing botrytis. Here is the hardware required for installation. Start by applying the conductive gel on the stem, which will optimize the heat transport by the sensor, ensuring more accurate measurements. It is important to do this gently so as not to damage the stem. Once the stem is coated with the gel, cut a piece of plastic film and wrap it thinly around the stem. Then remove all oxygen bubbles under the plastic to prevent root development. Again, be careful not to cover old wounds. Before installing the sensor, it is preferable to spread some gel inside it. During installation, it is critical that the metal bits inside the sensor are in contact with the stem, otherwise the measurements will not be reliable. Wrap the sensor around the stem with the connector facing the roots of the plant. Hold the sensor in position with one hand while you take the Velcro strap with the other. Wrap it gently around the sensor, starting in the middle. In order to avoid any constriction during the development of the stem, make sure not to tighten the Velcro too much. This is especially important for installation on peppers. Make sure to cover the entire sensor with the Velcro. This is the first layer of insulation and it prevents the sensor from moving. When you're finished, take the white fabric and cut it to the width of the installation, then wrap it around the stem with the porous side on the outside. Then take the insulating foam and fix it around the sensor. Do not hesitate to tighten it. Take the aluminum foil and pull a long piece. Once torn, fold the paper until it is about the width of the installation. Then wrap the foam and fold the ends back so that it has good contact everywhere on the sensors. 
Also, make sure that there are still small openings at the ends for gas exchange. The last insulation is bubble wrap. Wrap it around the foil. It will provide additional protection against radiation. It is best to cut it a little wider than the installation. To fix the bubble wrap, use three cable fasteners, one for the middle of the installation and two for the ends. On this picture, you can see the opening we leave for the gas exchange. Finally, take the SAP flow cable and connect it to the sensor. When the connectors make contact, you have to turn the rotating element until you hear a click. This means that the cables are well connected. The installation of the PhytoSense data logger. When the logger has been attached to a pole or gutter, take the antenna and attach it to unit. Then connect other cables one by one. Here we start with the SAP flow cable, then the diameter cable, and finally the power supply. Once the box is switched on, a flashing green light indicates that it is looking for a cellular network. When it has found the signal and makes a connection, it flashes blue rapidly. The light will glow slowly in blue indicating that it has been connected to the server and will transmit data.